very warm good evening. Uh, we are having the day two of WCOA, and I think everybody is as excited as the day one, and we still have two more days to go. Um, I know we don't have the ICI folks here, but I really like to thank them for this opportunity that they've given us to bring leading technology companies, uh, eminent speakers, and you know some of the very reputed folks in the accounting industry here to discuss, brainstorm, and bring some of the best solutions for accountants. Uh, so today, what we are doing here right now is um, we brought together Zoho and HSBC and our very own Mr. Gurujan Associates here so that we can talk to you more about connected banking. Right? So this is going to be a panel discussion and we have a high tea session over here. So feel free to go and grab a cup of tea or coffee. Uh, feel free to move around basically. Uh, so we will start off by inviting these eminent speakers on stage here. So I'd like to call upon Mr. Gurujana here. Uh, I apologize, Mr. Gurujan is Guru and he has Mr. Gurujana, sorry. Okay, sir. So I will this mic. Okay, next I'd like to call upon Mr. Prakash Jaiswal. He's the managing director, country head of HSBC India. Should I take a Next, I'd like to call upon Mr. Shivrama Krishnan Ishwaran. He heads the finance and operations division at Zoho. <laughs> Okay, now coming back to me, my name is Vesh Maro and I have the marketing for Zoho's Finance Solutions and I'm going to be moderating this session. Uh, so the session is planned for about like 20-30 minutes where we will ask a couple of questions to these folks and then we will open up for Q&A. So the theme of this session is Connected Banking. How many of you have heard of this term, Connected Banking? Great. How many of you are uh, using any of these Zoho solutions? And that's it. How many of you are HSBC clients? Okay, how many of you use connected banking with Zoho and HSBC? That's it. Okay, so you want everybody. So we, we have a lot of prospects here. <laughs> <laughs> For both yeah. us, both Zoho and us. Yeah, yeah both Zoho and HSBC, we have a lot of prospects. Thanks. Exactly. So, uh, the next 20 30 minutes, we are going to hear all about connected banking and how people can use it to transform their business and the firm. And we are going to hear a story from Mr. Guru as well as to how this has transformed this firm as well. Right? Okay, so we're going to start with Mr. Guru. Um, nobody needs, an, he doesn't need an introduction over here because while I was sitting at the corner over there, many of uh, the folks sitting over had walked up to him and uh, they have told him that they are his fans and he, they have, he has completely inspired the way how the accounting firms can be transformed from a paper office to a paperless one, right? So can you share your journey of how you transitioned your firm and what are the challenges that you faced? Hey, thank you all. Uh, I'm not in the best of shapes. I've not slept for practically three days. So I tried to push as much as possible. Struggling between Singapore, Dubai and yesterday night, I came at 3 and went to the hotel at 5.30 and was here in the venue at 8 o'clock. So it's been not too comfortable for me. So please bear with me. So many of us, especially the grey-haired ones sitting here, we used to have this tedious chalans. It used to be a beautiful chalan of four parts. Uh, first would be the SSE copy, then the bank copy, then the income tax copy, then we used to get one more copy. And that is equal to cash because without a chalan we can't file anything. The income tax department would not accept your return, which was a manual return. Way back in 2008, one day, there was a little murmur in the office and uh, people were very worried in the office. The 20,000 rupees chalan had gone somewhere and 2008, 20,000 is a lot of money. Then the tool belongs to the client. So they were frantically searching everything. They were searching thousands of files, hunting it. And we didn't get it. We didn't get the channel at all. Then my partner was sitting on the floor, uh, going through the files. We are accountants, we are child accountants. We can't be struggling like this for a channel. In fact, now it is time for me to plan taxes. I'm sitting and searching a paper. So many of you can relate with me when you do the stat audit, you don't know which tally is right. Your tally or the client's desktop tally or what is there in Gmail. We don't know which is right. Finally, we all, all the audit starts with what did I find? Let me sit and compare. 
maybe prakash would not be able to relate with this part of our profession but the fact remains that so that is how we started becoming paperless so we had a game in the office we took the fights and all this we need to be paperless you need to have a lot of fun if you don't have fun you can't make you can't implement it so we took a file and uh, empty the file in a gunny bag gunny bag when that those days we had around 70 files we shook up everything and told okay we'll make seven teams and seven files how do you arrange this file bag and people were really perplexed how do you arrange a file bag it's all over everywhere it box file of 400 pages there is so we slowly stepped into digitization we don't know if this is the case in case you scan it it's so much more easy so anything associated with a change has to come with fun if there's no fun there cannot be a change that's how we transformed and today a lot of people ask me a visiting card i don't have a visiting card because that's paper we do have paper but that sits in the toilet <laughs> so other than that we don't have a paper in the office we have eight floors in one stand alone building in bangalore mr narayan has come as soon as you open it uh, there is zero paper it's clear of course i am still the old timer i still keep a diary and a book but any of the extras think this guy is having a book still that's how we started the journey so which year did you do this and how long this was in 2008 9 okay question to the audience how many of you have a completely digital accounting firm any raise of hands fantastic great thanks sir uh we move on to mr prakash as well um prakash you've been heading the uh, business banking unit for hsbc india and you have about 20 years of experience in the banking domain itself how uh, difficult have you found to establish the hsbc brand in india and how has the journey been so far yeah so hsbc story uh, is an interesting one because we are a very old bank we have been in the country for 150 plus years so we are hardly foreign that way uh, but the but the interesting part is that we have largely been a wholesale bank in the country right and that's how we have known we are obviously a regulated entity so you are distribution is constrained it's licensed so you can't even if i want to go to 500 cities in india i can't uh, that that the being a foreign bank comes with that constraint uh, in the last decade or i would say specifically in the last 6 7 8 years we have been very consciously trying to build our sme business and the consumer business and 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 literally this is the bottom of the pyramid right uh, and if you look at us globally uh, let's say if you look at us in uk and hong kong which are large home markets the bottom of the pyramid which is the sme and retail bank is actually bigger than the rest part of the pyramid so it's actually bigger than the whole say bank so we as an institution understand the power of building the base right now the question is why have we not built this in india let's say for the last 150 140 years i personally believe that india is at the cusp of a transformation for the sme business uh, with a combination of regulatory data technology uh, zoho is a good example and we'll hear about how that aids our ambition to become bigger uh, its data technology regulation i feel for a uh, bank like us which distribution will always remain constrained this is the great uh, start of a curve right uh, and we as a bank have seen that in other countries so we have that advantage right that we have been in 90 countries for uh, 150 years plus so we've seen these cycles we've seen this cycle in china for the last 20 years right we have seen the cycle in uk and other markets so we can clearly see that in india and we are very quietly very silently preparing for that uh, it's very clear that it's a big wave in india next 10 20 30 40 years we have 6 and 1/2 crore smes but 97% of them are micro but the whole technology gives you the hope that lot many smes will become scalable than it has happened in the last let's say 50 years in this country and and for a service provider like us we are a service provider like us this is a huge start for wave so that's how we think about it rishu um uh, that's a good question so when we talk about hsbc right there's this perception that it's an international bank and it's for multinationals um how does it uh, 
that you know make any sense yeah. for small business. Yeah. So I'll tell you. I keep telling my team that we do the we are doing the job of demystifying. Uh, in the Indian market, a lot of other markets, it's a fact that MNC is a very large part of our business because we have a very large international network. In fact, in aggregate, we have the largest international network in the world. We are in sixty-four countries. Can you imagine any new bank being able to build that in the current scheme of regulation and 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 the whole geopolitical this that? So that remains our big strength. So anything. Think international, think HSBC across the world is clear, but look at the Indian uh, opportunity. MNC is clearly a big opportunity. There's a lot of investment coming in the country, and we have actually benefited a lot from that. Right, our MNC business would have grown at CAGR of more than twenty percent over the last decade and a half. Right, but look at the larger opportunity of global local companies going global. That's one. And we have benefited. So, if you look at all the conglomerates, we are the main bankers because we take them international. But also look at the local companies, both mid-size and SMEs, which have a completely domestic business. And that, I think, is the largest opportunity for somebody like us. What we don't have are is branches and distribution. But what we can have, and me and Shiva were discussing this, what we can have is technology. And today, because of data and technology being available. And governance being pegged up for SMEs as well, and a thirty crore, twenty crore companies as governed as a billion dollar company today, right? Uh, and and those are doing it. We see it every day. Today, a very small SME is as high quality as a large company, right? So that lies the big opportunity for us. But it's a process, Vishma. Uh, we are not seeing on billboards like Zoho. But we are seeing in places like this. I was just telling Shiva there is a VC platform in Bangalore. There's an event happening there as we speak, and my colleagues are there. And this is how we will build it big by big. We have done it uh, beautifully in the last five six years, and we'll keep doing this. Uh, however difficult it is, it's a huge opportunity, right? So. Yeah, honestly, it took us like twenty plus years to have the big board to move back. So it's not, it's not on the twentieth day we had the big board. But you got buses also in Mumbai. <laughs> I mean, if you saw the billboards on the buses, <laughs> it's the first thing you see out of the airport. Yeah. Like my race is yeah. from Thank you so much. You made the day. <laughs> that, that was a selfish question from Deshma. <laughs> Thank you. We got our money back. So. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. So let's move on to Zoho. Uh, Shiva, you've been with the company for twenty plus years, um, and you've been in the domain for a very, very long time. Um, can you tell us something about Zoho? How your journey has been, the suite of applications that you've been building in the finance domain, and what do you have to offer for the folks sitting over here? Thanks. Uh, thanks for taking time to attend this session. Thanks a lot for that. Thanks, Reshma. Thanks for this opportunity. Um, so I actually started my career in Zoho. So uh, I used to uh, say that I was a 12th employee in Zoho, and now we have about 12,000 employees wow. in Zoho. Right. So that's that's what I see. So I started when the revenue was less than say 100,000 dollars. Today we are like uh, the first 10 months of this year we crossed billion dollars. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, initially there is uh, people talk about uh, starting their career in uh, garage, right? So I started my career in Sridhar's house, uh, first floor, where we had a swing and just a bunch of desktops. That's how I started my career. So I did not even think like I'll be there in this company for 25 years, right? So when I tell my daughter that I've been working in the company for 25 years, she used to see me like, oh, okay, 25 years in the same company, right? And <laughs> to the tech sector, right? Yeah. So. Even uh, during the interview, the first question that uh, one of the co-founder asked was like, "What is your plan? Like, how, how long will you stay?" Is it like three years, oh. right? <laughs> But looking back, it has been twenty-five years. Yeah. So we actually uh, uh, just a very small introduction about the company. We started in the telecom space. Uh, then we actually started providing uh, management software for uh, the uh, network equipment vendors like Cisco, Nortel, all this. And uh, when 2001 to the telecom bust happened, right? That's when we actually transitioned uh, and uh, started a new division, uh, managing them. So here we started focusing on uh, the uh, uh, enterprise IT segment, right? 
So this is what actually recession does to you, right? Not all recessions are bad. Fortunately, recessions have worked wonders for Zoho. The first time it worked wonders was in the, during the dot com was where we actually transitioned as a company from uh, uh, telecom network equipment, focusing on the network, network equipment vendors to the enterprise IT. And then, then during uh, 2008, 9, that is when we started focusing more on Zoho as a division. Zoho as a division was born somewhere around 2004. We were not focusing that much on Zoho because our other divisions were making a lot of money. During 2008, 2009, that downturn, that is when we started focusing on Zoho as a division. So not all downturns are bad because people talk about the bad macroeconomic conditions, they're saying nothing at all, right? Fortunately for Zoho, it has worked wonders. So if we have the right strategy, I'm sure like even this 2022 can be good for a lot of companies. And uh, now coming back to Zoho, right? Uh, so again, 2008, we started 2000, uh, Zoho in 2004. So uh, it was going slow. We did not do all this billboard ads. We did not have a lot of money. So we were growing very organically. Uh, so we started uh, as a word processor. Then we started adding two more products like CRM, uh, uh, some of the market automation tools and all those things. And slowly the traction started building and that is when we started focusing on the finance related products, right? So the question was like, who can do it? And uh, almost everyone in the company was engineers. None of them had any finance background. Fortunately or unfortunately, I did, I did my CWA back in 90s, late 90s. So Sridhar said like, hey, you have finance background, so why don't you start it? So that's how I got into the finance space. Or else before this, I was actually working on a wireless security related product. So we got started with the finance space in 2008. So billing was our first product. We launched the billing product in 2008. Uh, this was a complete um, AR product. This it took care of the account receivables because that was an easy to easy one to start with, right? So we had the strategy because we are not a funded company. We don't have a lot of money, so we had to release a product quickly and start making money. So what was the easier one to attack in finance domain? AR. Yeah. So we started with that, and then uh, 2012, 2013, we actually launched Zogo Box, uh, which is a flagship product today. Uh, accounting solution. Yes, we had our own challenges uh, growing this product, 10 year journey of the product, a lot of challenges. Uh, in each and every market, we had to literally fight against the incumbents. Any country you take, right? So the first country we started focusing on was US. So QuickBooks with about 85% market share in this country, right? So that's how we got started. Then we kept adding product after product, uh, inventory, expense, payroll, lot of these products. So we transitioned from a single product to, again, I'm talking about the finance suite. Zoho always has been a suite of products. So from a single product to a suite of products. And then the next transition was the platform. So what do what you see about the products today? They are not just end user products. We have a Pakka platform. And when I say platform, these are like completely customizable, extendable product. You don't see some functionality in the product. You can build it yourself kind of. And then we started focusing on the ecosystem, the partners, system integrators, consultants, and all this. And then the services around that. That is where all of this uh, integration with the banks, shipping providers, lending, all this comes in. So we are a complete financial platform, right? So that's that's a that are, that's how the journey has been from a product to a suite to a platform, financial platform with all the services. Thanks, Shiva. So uh, next question. So we've been talking about, you know, banking solutions, we've been talking about accounting firms and accountants, we've been talking about technology solutions, right? What triggered uh, connected banking as a concept? And uh, many of the audience don't know what connected banking is exactly. So can you explain what connected banking is and uh, how does it connect with those solutions? Yeah. See, uh, we as a company, uh, see, we, we uh, most of us actually come from a technology background, right? So for us, uh, it was always a common sense that uh, the business finance and banking should work together, right? That has always been in silos. Like when you actually look at the reality, right? They don't talk to each other. So whatever you do in bank, again, you take all those transactions and then you start recording in your uh, books. I had some exposure to this uh, because I was in an auditing firm for about a month or two, not more than that. So I got a software job, so I quickly switched this software job. So I knew about this BRS and all those things, right? So that is what we wanted to attack. Uh, that's the problem that we wanted to attack uh, when we actually got a chance, right? So we were actually looking at it. So for us, this should not be in silos. These has to work together, right? So that is when this concept of connected banking was born. So we started talking to various banks. So we said like, hey, 
can we actually connect your bank to the software so we can actually help the mutual customer any customer who is using this particular bank and our software can save a lot of time they can save a lot of money right that is how this concept of connected banking was born there is connection between your business finance and your banking software that is the uh, connected banking concept again the obvious question is like what are the things that we can connect right the possibilities are endless we can start with some something very simple right so any bank that we talk to we actually start with something very simple hey we can just connect to you download the statement so that the users don't have to upload it this is the most basic stuff right but hey even a lot of accounting firms and companies spend a lot of time on this so that's the first basic stuff so this we can automate every day 12 o'clock the statement automatically gets downloaded right so that's the basic one and then the next part is like uh, reconciliation because the software can match what do we do in reconciliation we try and match a few fields and then say like oh this is this kind of thing right the software today has more intelligence it can match much more easily than the human right so we can solve the reconciliation problem and not just reconciliation what else tables so what do people do they actually look at all the vendor statement everything and then they actually create a excel sheet and then take this excel sheet to the banking software and banking software upload the statement there make all the payments and all the approval work flows and all those things but all those things actually can be done within the context here you are looking at a vendor detail space you can very well see like oh okay i have to make this payment to the center click of a button you can make the payment you can have all the approval work flows everything right vendor payments collections right collecting money uh, directly from your customers so all this actually can be made easy not collections again the possibilities are endless today we even talk about integrating with the cards credit cards right Car card statement automatically follow flowing in and a uh, lot of things like that so the possibilities are endless so the idea of connected banking was born somewhere around 2017 uh, the first bank that we worked with was icici today we are happy like uh, we work with banks like hsbc we have uh, uh, integration with five different banks and uh, the idea is to keep adding to it uh, we are actually talking to a lot of banks uh, including some large public sector banks hopefully we are able to help you guys uh, save your time and uh, money okay, i'm going to take a couple of moments there um, so <clears throat> many of the folks here have not uh, transitioned from desktop to cloud and now you're saying connect cloud to bank so there's a big question of security over here um, how secure is connecting a bank with an accounting platform i can tell you that uh, uh, security in cloud is lot 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 better than security in desktop right say for example let's say that like you have all the data in your desktop who is taking care of the data maybe you are doing it directly yourself or maybe you have a couple of guys in it who take care of it it's very difficult today the complexity the security problem is not a simple problem it's very difficult right if you actually look at zoho we have a team of few hundred people who take care of security who actually look at each and every vulnerability that comes up see how this can impact uh, us our customers and we how we can defend against all this vulnerability not just vulnerability there are, i don't want to get into those security details but yeah the problem as such is very complex some of there is this myth that if the data is there in the desktop everything is secure and safe right <laughs> that's that's definitely not true data in cloud is much more secure and the second question is like uh, um, should i really put my data in cloud fortunately or unfortunately today all your data is already there in the cloud this is nothing new like you you use banks right there is the data store so data is already there in the cloud so there is it's it's not a question of should i really put this data in the cloud or not it's already there in the cloud right and then the security right for security actually we do a lot of things so we have uh, very strict uh, layers of security i don't want to get into the details of those but the simple mechanism like take passwords um authentication mechanism so we try to bring in all the latest and the greatest things so that you and your data is really really secure be it the two factor authentication whatever security that you have with your banking system right we try and replicate the same thing so even if you are connecting the bank we try to reuse the same authentication mechanism that the bank has just that we are downloading the statement other than that it's nothing like we only have a read only access to your uh, uh, data right and that to upon your concern so i my solution is please don't worry too much about all this just make the leap forward krishna can i tell you a story about this cloud thing yes please in in our bank and you can imagine like banks regulated which is we say conservative and tell you a story which happened with us 
in 2018, I wanted to buy an application for the team where the vendor said we can only deliver to your cloud. And I went to my chain saying, give me approval. They said, no, you have to prove to us why you're on cloud. Okay, so being on the cloud was an exception. Okay, now three months back, we wanted to buy an application, and for some reason, we were told that it should be on in premises. I went to the same guy. He said, why in premises? <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, Prakash, now we move on to you. So, um, HSBC Enzo has partnered to offer connected banking. I know we have a lot of customers who have been exploring it, using it. Uh, what has the been the pulse uh, in the you know community? What do customers say? How they have been using it? How they benefited? Yeah. See, if I have to explain connected banking, uh, Shiva is Zoho. We are a bank. Uh, Guru sir is an accountant. <laughs> Just imagine Rishma as an SME customer, right? And I think this is connected banking. If you see other than Reshma, everybody is a service provider. You're a tech service provider, I'm a banking service provider, and you're an accounting service provider. I think connected banking is just connecting all of us so that it's safe. In fact, our pitch uh, deck on connected banking has a safety as the first one. It's actually safer, right? There is no drop of data or uh, you're doing something with the data when it changes hands in terms of systems. So it's safe. It's less on effort, less on cost. I think experience, I wouldn't have to explain that it's a totally different experience. I think our experience, our journey is very new. It's, it's a one year old partnership, but more or less, I would say, uh, customer experience or adoption has been, let's say, eight to nine months. It's very early. But I have some of my sales team sitting here as well. And in banking, whenever you meet a client, you put up a call report, right? We're a regulated industry, so you have to put, we use some of the CRM, uh, no, no, sure. No, no. <laughs> and every call report, we are selling Zoho. And sales guys only sell what customers want to hear, right? So I think it's, it's clearly very exciting for an SME or a businessman. And it makes the job of these three service providers easier to serve the client well. Uh, I think obviously, as Shiva mentioned, that you can do a lot more. We have done uh, technical integration uh, on the Zoho platform for payments to start with uh, for various applications. But I think it's just the start. We are having very deep dialogue with Shiva and team to do many more product co-creation. In fact, I was, as I'm going back to what I said, the chance for us to meet big in India cannot happen unless we use technology to create products, which banks haven't done in the past. So I think connected banking is that core to our, 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 our strategy. I think experience of people who've used, Guru has many clients who use both HSBC and Zoho, and, and, and so experience is great. We just have to be at it. Uh, keep developing technology, keep developing the whole connected or embedding to various applications because customers will finally would use it more when it's just not accounting and it's many other things. Right? Because every most of the business processes will have a banking leg. So, so in short, Rishma, it's, it's a good, but a long way to go for us. And I'm very happy to uh, be here with so many accountants and, and chartered accountants and service providers. You guys will become the, the agent for us to uh, advocate it more. And, um, uh, Reshma, sorry, I'll uh, just add one more thing. So, uh, whenever we talk about connected banking, people generally uh, confuse this with uh, post to post connection. People will always say, always say like uh, they already have uh, a server in their office which actually connects to the bank. Uh, so, we already have a post to post connection and all those. Post to post connection is completely different. Post to post is done specifically between that organization and their bank account, right? It costs a lot. You'll have to have a server. Again, you'll have to take the security and all those IT aspects of the server, right? You are using a ERP. You'll have to pay a lot of money. In some cases, millions of dollars to the ERP provider to connect to the banks. Again, you may even, if you are not a large enough customer for the bank, you might even end up paying for the, uh, to the bank for the services, right? But if you use Zoho, Zoho on HSBC, right? You don't have to do anything. You just have to authenticate yourself using your bank phone, just like the way you are using the uh, net banking. So things seamlessly work. So we are an IT company. We are not a bank. So we know our limitations better. We can never be a bank. 
right? We we have a lot of we have to take care of compliance, this thing, that thing, and all. Similarly, a bank cannot become an IT company because of various complications, comp uh, compliance requirements, and all those things. So here we have a natural. Uh, that is, if the banks and the IT companies can come together, it can be a very natural symbiotic relationship, and that's exactly what is happening with players like Zoho and Legacy. That's what is connected back into it. Uh, can I just uh, use a different language to explain this? Normally, what do we do is we take an accounts payable voucher, pass a debit and a credit, then it goes and sits in the AP ledger. Once it goes to the AP ledger, we sort out the AP ledger and tell which which payment I have to make. Those payments we make and then generate an Excel file, uh, send it to the MD, telling that these twenty payments have to be made. What should I do? MD will tell the two more rupees. Only 18 you guys take a payment. Let me bring it back and upload as a CMS file in the bank portal and in the FT press end. After you do that, the SMS will come to either the MSME customer or it comes to you. So you send a receipt to the MSME customer. So look at the number of steps which is coming. Now let us just change this to a little small extent. Firstly, we remove the account stability because there is a Zoho scan or any scan, verify scan is there. So account stable entry is removed. Secondly, the payment entry is removed because you are going to not generate an XML file or a CMS file. You are going there and instead of pressing enter in time, similar way you still okay make a bank payment on this. So you are directly making a bank payment from Zoho. You enter that eighteen items what you want to make a bank payment. Choose it. Press enter. It takes you to the bank portal. The moment you do that, you don't have to generate a receipt to the customer because the customer is going to get it from Zoho. So the nine steps which I told has become now two steps. Just to go back and see if at all there is a two zero six which we are going to file, we need to collect two zero six, make an accounts master again nine steps. Now in case I can get a vendor master only in a Zoho, so that vendor master also I don't have to create and give a link to a vendor. He'll upload the master. So the entire seamless exercise happens within, or uh, no accounts payable entry, no payment entry. So that means credit side of your balance sheet is taken care of. Uh, sorry, debit side of the pay and the account is totally taken care of. And in case you can integrate GST and TDS also, that also is not done. So what we are trying to do is remove the number of steps. Having said that, don't do everything in the same day. Because when we started Excel, we always used to do A to D. Total at sum. Then only we went to subtraction. Then we went to multiplication. If you start doing private tables day one, you're in trouble. <laughs> so do step by step. First you do the AP scan. Then you do the AP sorter. Then you do a CMS file. Then you do the receipt file. Then you do a two zero six. Because any software, if you want to integrate, it needs to give you results tomorrow morning. The moment we file a tax return, we send a bill. We want returns immediately. We don't wait for three days. We raise a return. So here, if you do everything together and expect a data analytics to figure out, you take two months and you lose interest. Do it step by step. It will take one day for each step or half a day for each step. So over a period of three days, you are already clicking the voucher, clicking the bank, payment is gone, BRS is done, receipt is generated, and more than that, IFC controls are there. All of us know IFC controls. IFC control is taken care of. We don't even need to do the IFC control because nine steps have been removed. Risk factor is removed. Walkthroughs are done. So to that extent, if I can get the risk factor and walkthroughs done, my debit of payment and account payment entry is out of my reach. Then imagine you only have receipts. If I get the receipts done, books are ready. You don't have anything much left. I hope I was clear. So accountants are definitely better than bankers. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can use a word of what you said. It's banking on accounting, right? Yeah. So that's the term we use to train the sales guys. Right. I think you're expecting. Embedded finance. Embedded finance. Okay, so um, we will be coming back. You hold your story. You want to hear it in full? I thought she had forgotten. So I only told I want to add something. Mistake. <laughs> 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 she forgot or something. This light, they can see me also. Yeah. <laughs> Just two more minutes. We'll be back to you. So, Prakash, um, quick question. So, we're talking about customers, right? 
what kind of segments do you see adopting connected banking more? Is it the startups, is it the MNCs, or how do you see that? Yeah, see, so in our experience, again, very limited experience, we have close to 350 people uh, who use Zoho, uh, and we will be talking to, let's say, another thousand, thousand and a half. Our experience is that whichever company is at a younger part of the life cycle, their life cycle, uh, they seem to be better use of this, like they are better use, users of technology or any digitizing, that's one. I would also put another uh, observation that wherever it adds more valuation. So I'll give an example which we, it's a use case we have curated with Zoho, and I'm sure a lot of other banks will copy it now, is that a lot of these business models are very large volume, low value payments because of the business model. Let's say there's three, they make lakh payments in a week to their guys who ferry your food, right? So we curated a bulk payment. You don't have to click 400 times, uh, you can click one. So I would say it's also based on use case, but typically we have seen smaller companies, tech companies. I wouldn't differentiate between tech and traditional because that's not fair to do. I think any SMEs are anyway better adopters of technology. India is, is a story which has proven that to the world, that SMEs, smaller enterprises, younger users are better. Uh, but I would say it's actually the use case. For example, we have developed another curation with uh, Zoho, which is very core to our strategy, being an MNC bank, is cross-border payment. Cross-border payment is, is, is very cumbersome. You will send a paper to the bank, bank can say scan it, and if they scan it and they say, they we call it digital. Uh, so those kind of uh, things also happen, right? It's hardly digital, right? It's electronic at best. Uh, so we actually made it completely paperless embedded on Zoho platform. So if you have to make a dollar payment, you can actually dial the banking on Zoho. So it's also the use case, I would say. Uh, and, and I'm going back to what Shiva said, you have to keep innovating and you have to keep the interest of Rishma, who's a customer, <laughs> right? So if you do that, and if you should have people like Guru who can explain it so right? <laughs> I don't know, for them they call Siva, for him they call Prakash, because I have a little more grey hair, they are only calling me Guru sir. <laughs> <laughs> Especially to add on to this, today's age of business is very different. I was working in a company in Bayandar. Mm -hmm. In a click of a button, you get a loan. You go to the loan and the money transfers from the NBFC to the borrower directly. Now imagine those days we had to do this, doing manually, take the check, go ahead. Only one cause of concern, those days in case I want to delay the payment, I'll write a check and courier it. Yeah. <laughs> Today we can't do that. That float is not there. Okay, now we are going to complete attention on you now. So they have been doing their job, they have been selling banking solution and they have been talking about technology. But I think the audience wants to hear what you have to say. You've been using Zoho for a very long time now and you've also been using connected banking. How has your experience been? Oh, I was just telling somebody, Zoho, we never treated it as a software. We are 12 partners, extremely diverse. And uh, there's one video in YouTube, how I met the partners. One of them I met in a bus stand. So we don't even know their family name, we don't know their culture, we don't know their religion. We just met. So when we implemented something like Zoho, I was only telling the partners, it's not a software. If you look at our entire accounting fraternity sitting here, there are three things which we learn. We don't get partners. Second thing, there is a split among partnerships. And the third thing, people come, go. So what do I do with these partners? So all of a sudden, you will feel a 14-member firm doing a turnover of five crores. What is this 14-member firm doing a turnover of five crores? We are channel accounting. We need to know the numbers well. So Zoho, we got into a level of, so not a software, but more of a change of culture. Everything was different for us. Everything was change of culture. I'll give you a very classic example. We have a standard practice that Articles 9 and 9. All of you agree <laughs> with this point. <coughs> now, if you go to an article and tell, come to the front desk and drop your resume. <laughs> Second, you tell, mail to HR at gurujana.com. Now, that age is over. Now, the article is looking at EY. The article is looking at KPMG. I mean, what are these guys? So, if I just go to Zoho Recruit and tell him, you upload your resume here, he uploads it on WhatsApp. His form is auto-populated. The calendar gets generated automatically. The calendar goes to round one, round two, round three. Now, if there was an article coming or a chartered accountant coming, oh, Gautam Khadiya, Guru Anjana is also very good high-tech savvy. 
But actually, it's a matter of 200, 300 bucks a month. Yeah. It's not more than that. So it is not just a software we need to start looking at as how are we getting projected. Today morning sir was talking, we are going into joint audits. When we go into joint audits, we are getting bigger work. SME firms are getting, those days to get a work of 20 crores was very big. This crore of audit. Today Parvala is doing 20 crores audit. <laughs> Everybody is doing 20 crores. So today world is, it's not that only the multinational firms get an audit of 500 crores. Everybody are getting. But unless we show them that, look, this is what I can do, yeah. it is becoming impossible for us to grow it like this. We don't build dashboards, we are still depending on PPT, PPT made alone. We don't build data analytics, we still depend on Excel. So there is so much of human intervention. In case we can think about it as a shift of culture in our profession, it would do a lot more good than it is just an accounting software. It's a total shift of culture in our entire profession and we have experienced this. Last but not the least one, implement it in, in-house and let us face the fact if I do a stat audit, if I do a tax audit of SME, I get two lakhs and that my margin is 30%. For 60,000 rupees, I am taking that amount of risk. But if I can implement something like a Zoho and increase the sales of that guy by 1%, I can command 9 lakhs at a profitability of 80%. So we need to look at it as two ways, one change of culture. Second, how do we make more profits? If we look at those two answers, these are technology tools which will help us get there. So if we get those two answers, we are done. Was there any resistance when you wanted to move to cloud? Oh, a lot of resistance. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable resistance, but we need to have a Hitler in the office. <laughs> <laughs> then where it hurts more, then all the resistance will go. We implemented, in fact, the consultant who told us, he told you can't implement Zoho people in two months. I have been working for two months. Exactly two hours we implemented. You want to stay here, do this, otherwise bugger off. Over. <laughs> Any software gets implemented only like that. Another question now on connected banking itself. Um, how have your clients uh, adopted connected banking and what do they say? Most of them have adopted. In fact, many of them, in fact, know a case where they have almost around 3,000 Kirana stores. Kirana stores is the end things. Now we are able to make the payment for 3,000 of them just with a simple thing. It's a nice company, I can't name the company, it's an open house. So something like that, it has reduced my work by almost, we were doing that accounting with four people for making the AP. Now I do it with one person and that day doesn't have work. So my profitability will go up, my accuracy will go up. We, we badly need you in our marketing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next question to you is last question before we open the house for questions uh, final thoughts so we have these two gentlemen here so if you want to make lives a lot more easier for accountants what uh, new technology would you like to see or what innovations would you like to see actually we don't need to see any innovation there's too much of innovation in the market if we concentrate on innovation 5% and concentrate on implementation 95% we are done Whatever softwares are there, we can reach on the next one. So, Tally itself is innovation, we don't use it. So, Excel is an innovation. So, as long as we concentrate on only implementation, in fact, don't even uh, look at how to grade a software, how to rate a software, just by it. Jump into the well and you will start swimming. If you are sitting on the fence and keep telling, if it is going to so deep, then this will be like this, it will be cold water, we will never be able to implement anything. How did we implement MCA? From Gadak to Kashmir, <laughs> the entire world just implemented shutting their mouth. Now, how did we implement AIS? No questions asked. Everybody is implementing AIS. How did we implement GST? No questions asked. So, implementation only is the important thing. Don't worry about the software. It will have, in fact, we are using Zoho for now for almost four years. I don't think we have used even 10%. And what all I have used, he is seeing stars, what all these guys are using in this. We are using it for personal dairy, we are using it for appraisals, we are using it for timesheets, we are using it for payroll, we are using it for LMS. In fact, to use a wrong word here, we have raped it. <laughs> okay. So moving on to Mr. Prakash. Prakash, last question again to you. Um, so there's this entire range of fintech happening right now, right? And there are more and more tech companies coming in. What's the future of banking and technology that you see in the future of HSBC? Yeah. So this debate has been going on for quite some time, right? Uh, 
does banking compete with fintech? Uh, if you if you uh, see the media now, that debate is actually died down because banks and fintechs are competing. Okay, uh, you don't see that now. You used to see that a lot when COVID happened, uh, 2000 and 2021. Now you see much more debate on how can they work together, right? Uh, we as a business uh, are trying to create a playbook to become big in India with technology. So we deal with every fintech in the country, right? Uh, which is focused on SME. My belief is that the, the, the success recipe for banks and fintechs will be a combination of various things. It's not one. Somewhere banks will buy fintechs. Somewhere they will collaborate, somewhere they will compete, they will sort of co-create. And you can see those playbooks getting created, right? We as a bank have started investing in next generation fintechs. We as a bank globally have invested in 80 fintechs in the technology which we think. So you're investing in your disruption. In India, we have Zoho's one example. We are integrating with fintechs. Right. So, so Risha, my view is that how banks and fintechs will work together, that will find its own ways. But I don't think they have a threat from each other because bank brings capital and trust, which they don't have. They bring technology, they bring agility, they, they are younger, smarter, non-regulated, which we can never become. I keep saying that banking will never be in the front of technology. Okay, even a challenger bank in UK will be not as smart as a tech company. I think they have to collaborate. That's very clear. So that's why the debate has died down. Okay, now how to collaborate? It will find its own course. It's very clear that they can do things, certain things we can never dream of doing. And we have certain things which will they will never have. Right. Even in fintechs, all the fintechs get banking license. Let's say in India, we get open banking, real open banking out. There is enough space, place for everybody to survive and grow. And bank has certain things which all of us, will you keep your money with a fintech? Will you keep your fixed deposit with a fintech? Will not. But will you, will you do banking with, will you do your banking with a bank which does not use technology? So, so it will be a combination and you don't need to worry in my view. Uh, that how it will evolve, it will find its own way. So that's my personal observation. Yes, uh, thanks Prakash. So uh, last question Shiva and parting thoughts. So um, Zoho has already a suite of solutions for accountants and we know there are a couple more coming in the pipeline. Um, how do you think folks in this room can be empowered with Zoho solutions and short answer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, First and foremost, as he said, uh, as he rightly said, it's not about coming up with new products. It is all about uh, uh, making people use the existing solution. Right? So I would say that that is where our focus is going to be for the next few months. Obviously, there is there is a lot of investment in R&D. We are going to come up with a lot of products, um, enterprise products, products with fintech and all those things. But I don't want to focus on all those. The focus for the company for the next few years is going to be on the implementation. How can I we increase the implementation across the country for our products, right? So this is where the focus is on the ecosystem. Can we have more partners, consulting partners, system integration partners, accounting partners? How can we increase that? How can we have more training partners, right? So the focus is going to be more on training, adding the entire ecosystem around the product, a lot of partner integration. So that's where the focus is going to be. And uh, these things actually can be really, really helpful to the entire community. As you rightly said, again, I don't think I, I can explain it as better as what he has done, right? So this actually can be a, a game changer for any any of the participants. Thank you.